Okay, so I wanted to give you guys a little outline on what you're going to be doing in this course. Um, and we'll get through this pretty quickly. I just, I just felt like uh, video might be the easiest way to explain this. Basically, you're going to be setting up from four different locations, 5, 10, 15, and 20 yards. The 5-yard shot will only be a chip shot, and that is because kind of a general rule of thumb is that superintendents will not put uh, cut a hole less than one flag length away from the edge of a green, and, and very rarely is it that close. So if you can imagine, if the flag, if the hole has to be at least one flag length away from the edge of the green, and you've got a yard or two of fringe, um, then you're probably not going to have any pitch shots or high lofted shots that you need to play from five yards. You're probably going to be just in the fringe just off the green if you're ever that close. So the first location is a five yard chip and you're going to be hitting 10 balls from that location hoping to get as many balls as possible within six feet. Now I've got a chart here with some some ideal distances based on your ability. So take a look at the chart and you'll see that using the point system there's a kind of a baseline number that you need to get to if you're trying to break 80. Um, if you're a beginner golfer or you don't have that much experience, getting it within six feet is going to be very valuable for us. But if we're actually, you know, if we're trying to consistently break 80, we want to get a lot of those balls within three feet, actually. So you'll hit 10 balls from the five yard location and you'll be chipping. And you can use any club you want. And I think as you go through this drill, you're going to learn which clubs work better for you. So at any point, if you're at the five yard chipping location, if you decide, you know, I'm going to try my 56 degree sand wedge and it doesn't work well for you, then maybe try your 60 and your 52 to see which one works the best for you. You're gonna learn two things there. One, the club that fit, suits you best, and two, how far your ball needs to fly in order to end up going the total five yards. So it's probably gonna fly at least one yard to get it on the green, and then the other four yards to the hole, or maybe two and three, um, and try different clubs to figure out which one works the best from you for you at that location. The next location is a 10 yard chip. So Again, the chip is a shot that is about a yard or two off the green and it's mostly going to be rolling. So if it flies, you know, maybe two or three yards and goes a total of 10, that's more like a chip shot. Uh, so again, you might be using your 60 degree or your 56, possibly even your 52 there. Um, and depending on your stroke, probably, you know, probably a 56, 52 or maybe even a pitching wedge, depending on how much loft you put on the ball. The next location after the 10 yard chip is a 10 yard pitch. In this 10 yard pitch, we're looking for a shot or we're going to build a location for ourselves where we're 10 yards away from the hole, but we've got about half the distance to carry it to roll. So we won't be one yard off the green or two yards off the green. We might be something like four, four yards off the green. So we have to fly it five yards and it will roll five yards. In that pitch shot, you're much more likely to be using a 56 or a 60 degree wedge. Then you go to a 15 yard chip. Again, the chip is about a yard or two off the green flying just onto the green and rolling the rest of the distance. And again, try different clubs to see which ones work the best for you. Um, for the chip, it's obviously gonna be a lower lofted club. Probably won't be using a 60 degree wedge if we're chipping on the 10 yard chip. The 15 yard chip, definitely using a lower lower lofted club and the 15 yard, uh, 15 yard pitch using a higher lofted club. So I think you get the gist of this. Basically for the chipping locations, we're using a low shot a uh, low trajectory shot that's going to land and roll most of the distance to the hole. And for the pitching locations, we're using a higher shot that lands about half the distance or maybe even more than half the distance, depending on what green uh, you have at your golf course. Now, I'm actually on, uh, this morning I've decided to, to do this drill on the 18th hole at my course because our practice green doesn't really have a lot of options, uh, and, and specifically now it's under construction. So I know that no one's going to be on 18 yet today. Uh, so I can I can have about a half hour 45 minutes where I can do my chipping and pitching drills And no one's gonna come to me on the 18th hole if you can do that great at your course if they allow that that's awesome um, Another option is late in the evening. You could go out to the first hole maybe and um, You know after you know everybody's teed off and no one else is gonna be teeing off at 1 at say 530 or 630 in the evening Then you could go to hole number one with that there are some limitations Obviously, I've only got one hole cut here on the 18th green, so I, I can't have a five yard chip possibly because the, the hole's not cut close enough to the edge. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll make a location here about a yard off the green, and then I'll pace five yards and put a tee in the ground. And so for my point system there, I just say if I hit the tee, it's worth, a, it's worth five points like it went in the hole. If I'm within three feet, I get three points, and if, if I'm within six feet, I get one point. Anything outside of six feet, I don't get any points. 
And then obviously the shorter distance, shorter distances, the closer we want to be able to get to the hole. So about how much time this is going to take you. Um, when I when I do the drills, I do ten. I use ten balls, and I go through each location. And it takes me about thirty minutes. If you wanted to, you could do that twice. Uh, I don't suggest doing more than ten balls per location because you kind of get you end up with a bunch of balls around the hole, blocking other balls from coming in. But uh, you could go through it twice if you had an hour, or if you don't have a lot of time, you could do five balls and go five balls from five yards, five balls from ten yard chip, five balls from ten yard pitch, five balls from fifteen yard chip, fifteen yard pitch, twenty yard chip, twenty yard pitch. With this, if you can practice uh, as much as you can practice this, obviously the better you're going to get, the more you practice it. But I would say definitely, I would aim to do this, you know, for the next month or the next couple weeks. I would aim to do it two or three times a week. Just carve out a half an hour a day that you can get to the course and get this practice in because that's really, you know, as we stated, um, this area or this course is probably the easiest place or the most influential place when it comes to putting in some time and getting a high value relative to your scores. So um, I encourage you to, to go through this course, do it for a couple weeks. As always with every course, there's a money back guarantee. So if you're going through this course and you don't see your, your skill improving and you don't see your scores improving because of that, um, reach out to me and say, hey, Sam, something's wrong. I'm doing the drills, but I'm not getting any better. I'm happy to look at your stroke, see if there's any mechanical issues we need to change um, in order to help you to help you actually improve. And worst case scenario, if it just doesn't work for you, if this type of practice is just not possible for you and you somehow don't see it uh, helping you, I am happy to give your money back. I don't. I definitely don't want to take your payment if you don't see some improvement. So please feel free to reach back out to me and give me your feedback. And um, and yeah, take a couple weeks. I think you'll see improvement right away, but. Uh, definitely within the first two to three weeks and, and for sure within the first month you'll start to see while you're playing, while you're practicing but also while you're pl playing you'll have a lot more confidence, you'll know which club to use and when um, and that's, that's going to feed into your confidence and then of course uh, with higher confidence we make a better stroke and when we make a better stroke we get a better result. So I really think this is going to be a, a massively influential part of your games and, and I know for me when I started doing it in my professional career it changed everything. I could go out there and have a really bad ball striking round, hit like, you know, seven or eight greens in regulation and still shoot 72 or 73. Uh, and that's because I just spent so much time practicing these short shots. I knew that if I missed the green, I could get up and down most of the time. So again, the target for you guys is 50% up and downs. That will allow you to hit six greens in regulation, make your natural pars there. So hitting the green in regulation and making two putts will give you a par. And then if you can get up and down, the other 12 holes half the time you'll get six more pars for a total of 12 pars six bogeys 78 um, and if you're if you're struggling with other areas of the game obviously we have more content there but but this will definitely have a big impact on your score so I'm really excited to hear your results and I, I definitely want to hear from you guys let me know how it's going and let me know how um, how you find the course if you feel like there's anything missing or things that you need I'm happy to update to improve it because at the end of the day that's the goal, it's to help to give you guys the tools you need to play your best golf.